Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with the beginning of a new project video. Here you can see I have like 30 some odd stepper motors. These are these cheap, uh, the model number is right here, 28BYJ-48. And these are five volt stepper motors. They have five wires because that makes them actually easier to drive than the uh, bipolar ones. Uh, these have a common wire between all of them, which means you can just drive them with a uh, basically an array of NPN transistors. Or in my case, I'm actually using a uh, a Darlington, like a seven array Darlington uh, transistor chip that has uh, seven individual Darlington output drives. And what it does is it steps through each one kind of sequentially to drive the motor in one direction, and then you flip the polarity, well, not the polarity, you flip the order that you drive them in you reverse it in order to drive it in the opposite direction and your speed is a function of how fast you drive each each pin basically so uh my idea of why i bought so many of these i have a couple projects i bought way more than i needed i so i always wanted to make one of those seven mechanical seven segment clocks where each segment is like a paddle and it flips up or flips down to turn on and off the segment and it mechanically does that my requirement is that it has to be almost silent. And I think I got very close, uh, at least with this test setup. Now, in the design process, you generally you know, set your requirements, mechanically design something in CAD or something like that, and you get some kind of end output file. And then, so your first instinct is to, to go print that. What I would suggest is actually print like a test smaller setup to make sure that the way that you think it's going to work actually works and that's exactly what this is i just have this very simple motor control board that i designed with capacitive touch buttons i'm not using the buttons yet uh, but i'm just testing the motor drive so this is just set to rotate the motor uh, basically a quarter of a turn one way and then back the other way i have a second problem which is this clock it's going to have a lot of outputs so i'm going to chain all the motors via shift registers so i'm going to need quite a few and so I need a way of sensing. I don't know what state the paddle's going to be in when you first start up the clock. So I either put a sensor on everyone and then as soon as I boot, I enter a calibration routine that drives the motor until it hits the sensor. And then that's basically like how a 3D printer homes. I can do it that way, but then that requires a sensor per every paddle. So if I have a full, you know, four digits, that's going to be 28 cents lines that I'm going to need to add. So that's way too much complexity. I don't want to end up doing that. And it only really needs to do that once when it first boots up. And then afterwards, it can run it open loop uh, pretty reliably. Uh, your 3D printer doesn't need to recalibrate like halfway through, you know, a 16 hour print. So it's it's good enough as long as the motor doesn't slip. And these don't aren't going to really slip because these paddles are fairly light. So the way that I thought was actually to use magnets. So this is a coupler which goes on the end of the shaft of the motor, just presses on. And on the other end is a recess for a disc magnet. And each paddle has its own magnet. So I'll take this apart in a sec, but I wanna show you it working. So here I have the, the power brick. This will all run off of five volts. So there we go. So it does that reset. And then it's just going to keep oscillating through. And you can hear it's almost silent. Yeah, it's like very quiet. So to get around the problem of what happens if these aren't set up straight when they're uh, powered on, if I just set this to a random angle, it'll keep trying to rotate it. But because the magnets are only magnetically coupled, it'll slip a little when it gets towards the end. So I can just set this to any angle and it'll keep driving it, but it'll, it's like a slip clutch. And so also this means if, you know, you accidentally bump this and it falls off, it's not going to destroy anything. Now the magnets are smooth. So that even though they're attracted to each other, there's not much friction. So I actually had to cut a disc of like foam. I'm testing out different materials. I also have this disc of thin felt. Uh, and I'm testing to see what gives enough torque but yet slips easy enough. And I can just stick this back on. And this actually works 
way better than I could have ever hoped. Now the segments are going to be quite large because I'm planning on this being like a large wall clock. So this is going to be, I'm going to say about six inches per digit, the length. So the entire clock uh, from the top to the bottom is going to be about a foot tall, which is actually pretty large. <laughs> but yeah, you can see here, It's going to be mounted like this actually and you can see it's slipping a little bit due to gravity and the segments are going to be larger so they're going to have you know more mass to move around so i think i'm going to have to figure out a better material than that uh, foam that i'm using currently so that's why i'm banking on the felt maybe gluing a piece of felt to each piece will give it a bit more friction uh, so it'll have a bit more strength to uh to lift the pieces up what I'm probably going to end up doing is what I tried on this print, I uh, did a, a filament change. So I did the first layer as the inset, and then I changed the filament color so that it's uh, different. I didn't have any darker colored filaments to test with. I just grabbed whatever two I could find. Uh, but uh, you can see that the front is actually this marble color and the back is yellow. So I'm probably going to end up doing like white and black so I get the highest contrast. Uh, but I just did a test to see if this filament swap thing would be easy enough for me to do. And yeah, it is. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to have to find where I put my white filament. And I'm going to definitely need to buy black filament because I'm fresh out of that. I'm currently trying to uh, to work something out with uh, PCB ways so that if they can print all the pieces for me, that would save me, A, a lot of time, B, uh, filament is not cheap, so I, I wouldn't have to buy all that filament myself. So if they're able to provide that, that would definitely speed up the design process. Uh, but I'm doing small test prints like this where I basically took the entire design and I just made a small square version of it uh, that was pretty quick to print just to see what if mechanically my design is viable. And it does seem to be pretty viable. I just, I'm going to have to do some more experimentation on the uh, that slip kind of disc, what material I should make that out of. I, I think felt might be the way to go, uh, but I am definitely going to have to glue it because the felt interface to the plastic is too slippery, but felt to felt has plenty of friction, but will definitely slip if it hits resistance. So I think felt is going to end up working. I'm going to, this was cut by hand. I'm probably going to design it and laser cut a bunch at once. Uh, but yeah, if this works, this clock is actually, like, it would be really quiet, actually. And this is running just at 5 volts. I haven't measured the current, but this power adapter that I'm powering off of only can output 1 amp. So this is definitely less than an amp that it's running on. Uh, now, I might have to do something if multiple segments have to change at once. If that takes too much power, I might have to cascade them to make like a rippling effect so that they all don't change at once and draw all that power at once. That part is going to be the software side. This is the hardware. Once I get the hardware designed, then I can worry about, you know, software stuff later. This is just a proof of concept. Uh, this gives me enough confidence to go ahead and at least finish up catting the design. But anyway, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on this linkage or whatever, things that you think I can improve, make it work better but f with less complexity my first thought when i thought of like a slip linkage was like making some kind of mechanical clutch and i could have definitely gone that way but it would have made the design more complex made assembly more complex and probably have you know problems with implementation and like wear uh, with magnets they don't they're not really rubbing together so i, I don't think they'll wear long term they should be fine I actually designed them to have a slight gap between them where the uh, the disc material kind of goes. So they should be fine, but I'm actually probably just going to leave this run for like an entire day and see if it mechanically does anything weird. But yeah, so far it seems to work actually exactly like I thought it would. So uh, proof of concept, good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish designing some more stuff, get this a bit further along and... Uh, Hopefully I can get you guys an update once I can get like an entire segment uh, programmed and, uh, you know, assembled and everything. So I uh, will see you guys then. Bye.